Jay Furballs, and it is time for this month's Q&A. Now, I know it's been a while since I did one, so let's get to this month's Q&A. To start off with, I'll be answering Galaxy's question from Twitter. What made you become a furry? How did you find the furry fandom? What is your favourite thing about the furry fandom? And if Angle should not be a Dutch Angel Dragon, what would it be? And what is your best furry related memory? So I joined the furry fandom like back in 2012 to 2013 and it was kind of sort of accidental. Like my friend who I knew through doing art said to me, hey do you know what a furry is? I said no. Then he was like, you know what? I'm going to draw you a persona, which at that time I had no idea what the hell that was. And you can come and join the furry fandom. So I was like, hey, you know what, that's really cool. So my friend created my very first persona, and that's kind of sort of how I joined the furry fandom. I created an account on Fur Affinity, and I started to draw a lot more of my furry persona. I also started to write a fanfic about that particular persona, and I eventually started to create other personas at the same time. So me and my friend would actually draw our personas together, and he gave me a lot of tips when it comes to drawing. I do lots of art trades, I made lots of friends, and it was like an absolutely amazing time. I also got my first persona's fursuit made, and I was super, super, super duper excited as anyone else would be to get their first fursuit. However, something did kind of sort of go amiss and ruined the whole fandom for me. So what happened was, you know, there was like a furry convention or a get together or something like that and a radio station decided to come along and interview them and you know capture the footage of what was going on there at the meet or convention or something like that. I mean this is back in 2012, I really can't remember that much. But basically what happened was somebody said something about you know they like the look of fursuits and you know how the media is they'll take something and they twist it up so it sounds really weird and really creepy. So what was meant to be a fun and friendly get together was portrayed as like a lewd creepy weird thing of weird creepy people that dress up in these weird costumes and like lure people in and that that's like literally how it was put in words with these people i think i actually heard it on the news and i was pretty like you know downright heartbreaking to hear that stuff on the news just before your first it actually arrives like that devastated me and that honestly made me go you know i don't want to be a part of this fandom and that's how it was for a very, very long time. Like, I really didn't want to get involved with, you know, the furry furry side of things. Because it just, I, I didn't like how that was portrayed. Like, something that's supposed to be fun and friendly was, like, being put down as really weird and creepy. And that was not me. And, of course, being a very young-minded person back then, I was like, yeah, no, nah, no, nope, no. Nope, stay away. I don't want anything to do with that. I still stayed in the furry fandom. But I was more like, you know, in the Mass Effect and Halo community and just mainly focused on that more so than anything anthroy like personas and that. And then, after many years, I stumbled upon Engel. She was up for adoption and I just simply couldn't resist the temptation of adopting her. I fell back in love with actually a persona. And because of Engel, I basically become back into the furry fandom, or at least the furry side of things, and I was really, really happy because I found it to be so much more supportive now more protective and much more safer than what it used to be. Not saying that it wasn't always like that, but it's just that back then the media always found a really, really bad way to corrupt things and make it really, really bad. I mean, that still does happen, but just not at that degree of hatred and nastiness that the media had back then. Nowadays, it's a little bit more, you know, friendly-ish, but of course there is often that, you know, little sideline of, you know, this that hints towards a very bad past and yeah. So I am very, very thankful for the furry fandom. When I come back, you know, I was so amazed to start drawing again. I started creating characters again. I was so fun just to be back into the fandom in what I first fell in love with in the first place. As for what Angle could be if she wasn't a Dutch Angel Dragon, well, I guess a fluffy dragoness thingy. Like, I don't think there's actually any other way to put it because every feature about Engel is very similar to what a Dutch Angel Dragon would be. Besides that, maybe a, a hybrid cross species of a dragon with a raptor or something like that? <laughs> like, I really don't know, but, but that would be my best guess there is, you know, like something hybridy cross fluffy dragon thing. I mean, a lot of the time people do tell me Engel can't be a Dutch Angel Dragon, you know, her ears aren't pinned back like other Dutch Angel Dragons. And that's honestly one of the big things I get all the time, is like Engel's ears aren't pinned back like, you know, telephones. But to be honest, she actually has the same ears, it's just that they're pointed forward. 
Like, you know, her horses have their ears going forward and back. Well, it's basically the same thing. And I think that makes Engel so much more unique as a Dutch Angel Dragon. Like, it shows up in photos that, you know, she's alert, she's attentive. Not saying that other Dutchies with their ears back aren't so much, but I think it brings out Engel's personality just a bit more. As for my best related furry memory, I would most definitely say actually Central Coast Comic Con. Like, it sounds really out there and bizarre, but to be honest, I've never really been to a furry convention. I've been to furry meet, but going to a convention and seeing amazing furries, especially ones that you probably go from the internet, it's like, wow, where did you guys come from? Oh my god, I'm so happy to see you guys. And then, you know, just overload of chirping. And, and you're just, just going crazy and going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, for like the entire day. That, that's definitely my best furry related moment. Shippo asks, what is my shoe size? Um, hold on, just, just one second here guys. Maybe an eight? Maybe an eight? Maybe. Wait, hold on. What was I doing again? Oh yes, the Q&A. I want to get drunk, ask. What movies could you watch over and over and still love? Well, I'm a very big fan of horror films, thriller, true stories, adventure and comedy, but definitely horror films. And when you mix horror with comedy, well, you've got me with a bunch of sherbet and having a really, really fun time laughing and also screaming while watching a film. What better combination could you ask for? I would definitely have to say Cabin in the Woods is one of my favourite films that I could just keep watching over and over and over and over again because it has Sigourney Weaver in it and like I have loved her since I was like born in 1993 but I've like literally loved Sigourney Weaver ever since I watched the Alien films which was like it was probably like three or four when I watched that and like Ripley is awesome and I could probably like rewatch all the Alien films over again, but I still probably wouldn't be able to love them as much as I love Cabin in the Woods. One of the big reasons is because it takes the crap out of horror films. Like seriously, it is just made of funny comedy that you can just keep laughing at every single time. And it could probably make everyday jokes about every single thing that happens in that film. Even if you watch it like, you know, 2000 times over and over and over again. But yes, definitely Cabin in the Woods is one of my all-time favorites and like that's just a movie I could probably watch on repeat all night long, all day long, you name it. Dublin asks, what was your favorite Pokemon? Well, this is gonna be a really long-winded answer, but I like literally grew up with Pokemon as a kid. I was a 90s kid and still am. I was born in the 90s, so basically as I was being raised, there was like Pokemon everywhere. I had Pokemon shirts, I had Pokemon toys, I had Pokemon hats, I had Pokemon everything, and Bulbasaur was also one of my favourites, but there's always that one Pokemon that you just simply can't, you know, defeat in comparison to all the time favourites. Like, I would literally say that all the 90s, that all the first basic Pokemon that come out are probably some of my favourites. Like, from Ponita to Rapidash, Mew and Mewtwo, even to Meowth. Back in the good old days of Team Rocket. But one of my all-time favorites is actually Pidgeot. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I mean, it's a durable little chirpy bird, but it actually holds massive significance for me. Because when I got into Pokemon, Pidgeot was my very first Pokemon card that I ever got. And I was like, wow, this, this bird is so cool. No one's gonna take this bird away from me. And like, literally, I still have that card somewhere in my home because, like, I was so proud, like, I had never gone out to buy any actual Pokemon cards. My friends all had them, and one of my friends actually gave me the Pidgeot card. I was like, yes, my first Pokemon card ever. I feel like I'm on top of the world. And, like, everyone always keeps trying to make, you know, chase with me to get the Pidgeot. I was like, no, this, this is mine. This was my very first card. No, it's mine. And from that day on, I basically, like, make sure... I never took Pidgeot to school because you know how kids are sometimes like try to nick you know your awesome Pokemon card back in the day in the 90s or early 2000s you know kids and, and Pokemon cousins yeah there's always bound to be one or two cards that get stolen or at least back then it was Tigress G asks I would like to ask if all Dutch Angel Dragons have facial horns and solid color eyes well that's actually a really really good question one of the main features that makes Dutch Angel Dragons Dutch Angel Dragons is their eyes, their long ears, their tails, and their adorable chirpiness. 
everything else can be basically customized to your liking. But not every Dutch Angel Dragon has to have facial horns or solid colored eyes that look deep and deep and deep into your soul. Just kidding! Actually, Sniper is probably one of the best examples here. And if you go over onto the official Dutch Angel Dragon website, you'll see plenty of other Dutch Angel Dragons with like normal colored eyes. And I have noticed that some people use like elk horns and that as an alternative compared to facial horns. So not every single Dutch Angel Dragon actually has to have these features. It just really depends on what you yourself like. In fact, you can head over to the Dutch Angel Dragon official website, how to create your own unique duchy, and learn about the lore, the different types of Dutch Angel Dragons, and particular different styles to what your Dutch Angel Dragon can look like. From having a really long tail to a really short stubby little one. But that concludes this month's Q&A. And I apologize for how long and lengthy I answered them all. But it was really fun to answer all of your questions. And I look forward to doing next month's Q&A. If you would like to ask me a question for next month's Q&A to be featured in a Q&A video, by all means you can comment down below on YouTube with hashtag FurQ&A. Or you can head over to my social medias such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or even send them via email with the title Q&A and ask away. If you are keeping an eye out on Twitter and those, but as for Twitter and Instagram, I do usually ask at least a month prior and in between, as well as 24 hours before doing a Q&A video, if anyone has any questions for me, to ask below in the comments. So you can always keep an eye out on my social media, just in case you miss out on any of these videos. But that's all for now for this month's Q&A. Thank you guys for those who did ask questions. I really did enjoy answering them. In fact, some of them bring back a little nostalgia, especially when we talk about Pokemon. But that is all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as is always, I hope to see you all in the next video. But for now, bye-bye.